What's up you guys, it's Branson, and today we're having a daytime session at the gardens, playing some 5-5 or 5-5-10, whatever they have running. I'm wearing this shirt right here. It's from a company called Offsuit. I'm gonna put a link in the description. You can use my code and get a little discount, but they have some cool stuff. Anyway, I'll see you there, hit the intro. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is that I just don't like till, you know. <laughs> All right, we got the flush. Okay, he's got a set of eights. We got him. Hold. 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 Round. <laughs> Tell him he's got a lot of class. And it's all low. We start our day off on the 5-5 five, five tables, and one of the first hands I get into, I have 4-6 of spades in the hijack. I open $20 and only the button calls. The flop comes out, jack, 10, 5, rainbow. I have some backdoor straight and flush possibilities. I'm not winning this with 6 high, so I put in a c-bet of $25. He makes the call, and the turn is the jack of spades. I've improved to a flush draw now, and the second jack makes it less likely that he has one. Time to keep betting, and I make it $75. My opponent calls again, and the river comes the queen of spades. We hit our flush. Now I am actually hoping he does have a jack. I bet $200, but he quickly folds and we take it down. Get ready for one of the weirdest hands I've ever played, but first, if you could take a moment and hit the like button, I really appreciate it. It takes me a long time to edit these videos and your support goes a long way. So I pick up 6-7 of clubs on the button, the under the gun limps, the hijack raises to $30, I think briefly about 3-betting, but decide to just call in position to see a flop. The under the gun calls as well were 3 ways to a flop of 8-4-3 with 2 hearts. The under the gun leads out for $45, the preflop raiser folds, and it's on us. I think he's most likely leading here with an 8 or a draw of some kind. I'm in position, I decide to make the call, and it's a good thing I did because the turn comes a five. We hit our straight, the absolute nuts, and better yet, he bets again, this time for $100. I raise to $275, and eight is still the highest card on the board, so I try to make it a price I think a pair of eights might stick around. I also want action from his draws, or on the off chance he has a set, he makes the call, and the river comes the five of hearts. Now our opponent decides to go all in, and I'm not going to lie, this is probably the single worst river card to come out. All the flush is hit, and if he does somehow have a set, they all became full houses now. I only have $225 left in my stack, so this bet is less than a third of the pot. Even though I feel like I'm beat, I don't think I can fold to this price. But as I'm thinking, he says, it helps, I'll show you one card, first one. He flips an eight and then says, Put a hundred and I'll show you another one. <laughs> if I put a hundred in, you'll show the other one. Now he flips an ace. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I call and win the pot. What do you guys think of that deal? Have you ever seen anyone use this move? And do you think there's any appropriate time that this might work? Let me know in the comments. Next, I'm in this small blind and I pick up six nine of diamonds. There's a straddle to $10. I limp alongside two other guys. And the straddle checks. Four ways to a flop of five, eight, nine with two spades. This is one of the best flops we could have asked for. We have top pair, a gut shot, and a backdoor flush draw. Since no one raised preflop, no one has any obligation to bet, so I might as well put money in before the board changes too much. I bet $20. Only the cutoff calls and the turn is the queen of diamonds. Now I've improved to a flush draw and I continue betting for $45. The cutoff calls again and the river is the ace of diamonds. We hit our flush. I decide to bet huge $200. Hopefully he has a good hand or thinks I'm bluffing here. He makes the call. I show my hand and it's good. Not only does it feel good to get the back door, but I also get paid. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael. 
Oh my god, please. A little later, I'm dealt pocket fives in the low jack. I open a $20, the cutoff, button, and big blind call. Four ways to a flop that comes king, king, deuce, rainbow. Checks to me. I very well could have the best hand right now, and theoretically, I should have a lot of kings in my opening range. I see bet to $20. I don't have to bet very big since it's a paired board, and I'll still get the information I need. The button is my only caller, and the turn is a five. With the luck we're having today, of course I would hit the full house. <laughs> I'm not scared of anything here, so I decide to play it a little tricky and check. I figure he'll bet out with any king, and this way, I also give him the opportunity to bluff if he thinks I was just trying to make a move on the flop. He takes the bait and bets $170. He only has about 70 left in his stack, so I go all in, and he snap folds. Looks like he thought I was bluffing and was just trying to bluff the bluffer. After that, I pick up jack 10 off on the button. There's a straddle and one person limps, so I raise to $45. The straddle then goes all in for a total of 70 bucks. He's the same guy I beat from last hand. The limper folds. There's no way I'm folding any hand for 25 more dollars, so I call. He has king 10 off and wins. Oh well, can't win them all. From there, I get called for a seat at the 5-5-10, so I rack up and move tables. My first hour and a half at the 5-5-10 table, I was card dead, barely playing anything. A guy across the table commented on it, so I told him, you know what, this next hand's for you, and that leads us to the trash hand of queen four of diamonds in the small blind. The action folds to me, and I open to $35. The big blind calls, his name is June, and we're heads up to a flop of 7-8-5 with two diamonds. All things considered, this is about the best I can ask for with queen four. I have a flush draw and a gut shot. However, this board shouldn't connect well with my opening range, so I decide to check with the intention of check raising. June bets $60. I'm sticking to the plan, and I raise to $180. June calls, and the turn comes an offsuit ace. I have $485 left in my stack. At this point, I think I have two options. I can bet about half pot, or I can overbet the pot and rip my stack in. This ace should be a lot better for my range than his, so if I actually had a good hand that wanted to be paid off by a single pair type hand, I would probably bet half pot now and jam the river. On the other hand, jamming now would apply maximum pressure, but might look bluffier. I decide on the first option and bet $210. If he calls, I'll jam if I hit the river and give up if I miss. Well, it does not come to that because he goes all in. I guess I just have to call and hope I hit. That is until he starts kicking me in the leg. We're kicking you on the leg. <laughs> I'm kicking you on the leg. I'm kicking you on the... I know, I know, I know. Hang on. Make a deal. Right, you know, give me my hundred dollar bill or whatever. Now, June and I had been quite friendly, so him kicking me under the table is him saying, I have you beat. I have a monster. It's 275 more for me to call to win a pot of 1400 meaning I have to win 20% of the time to be profitable. Best case scenario is that all my straight and flush outs are clean, and I win 27% of the time. Worst case is that he has a hand like Ace X of Diamonds that has a pair and a better diamond draw, making my chances slim to none. I think it's pretty close. He mentioned making a deal, so I bring it back up. Do you want to make a deal or do you want to gamble? Whatever. I already gave you, I already gave you kickings. Do you yeah, have yeah. a deal that you want? Whatever you want. No, no, no. It, I give you hundred dollars back. I can afford. All right, all right. I'll take the hundred back and take the deal. Okay, man. Okay. Can I see it? Can I see it? Yeah, go look at it. Go. Don't see it now. You can kill yourself. Ah! <laughs> you son of a gun, June, kicking me with pocket tens. Ah! Oh, yeah! I reload and pick up a few small pots before getting aces on the hijack. The under the gun opens to $40, the low jack calls, 
I three bet to $150 and it's a dream scenario because both the under the gun and low jack call. Three ways to a flop of queen, ace, eight, rainbow. We flop top set and it checks to me. This is a tricky spot because betting into a multi-way pot looks strong. I block top pair twice and there aren't many draws. I think if I bet there's a high likelihood everyone folds, so I check back. The turn is the seven of spades completing the rainbow. Now the under the gun bets $200. The low jack folds. Again, I don't want to scare this guy away and there aren't many draws for me to worry about. So I just call in hopes he digs his own grave on the river. The river comes a six. He checks. And as I start to reach for my chips to bet, he insta mucks. So it looks like he was just trying to take it down on the turn with nothing. I switch seats and a while later we're in a bomb pot with 10 deuce of hearts in early position. The flop comes jack 8 9 rainbow. I decide to take a stab at it with my open ended straight draw and bet $70. The low jack is my only caller and the turn is a 4 completing the rainbow. This shouldn't change anything and I continue the pressure with a bet of $200. He calls again and the river is an ace. Decision time. The low jack most likely would have raised me at some point if he had two pair or better, so I put him on a lot of single pair hands, maybe a pair plus a straight draw like 10-8, 10-9. Since it's a bomb pot, I could have anything, any two pair combo, set, straight, and now that an overcard came on the river, it should make any pair feel even less secure. Okay, here we go. I bet $400 but he makes the call with pocket aces for a rivered set. Next hand, hopefully it goes better, I pick up pocket nines in the small blind. The hijack limps and the button makes it $40. I decide to call, the straddle calls and the hijack calls four ways to a flop that comes queen six deuce all hearts i check and the action checks all the way through the turn is a three i think my hand is decent having second pair and the nine of hearts but i'm looking to just get to showdown here so i check the straddle bets 110 dollars now both the hijack and button fold and it's back to me he could have flopped the flush but he could also be betting with a high heart, a queen, or maybe even just trying to make a move because he senses weakness. So I call, and the river is an offsuit seven. I check, and he now bets $345. This is almost a pot sized bet. With this size, he's polarizing himself, saying he has a flush or a bluff. I do have a heart blocker and think this particular player is definitely capable of doing this with the ace of hearts. I hope I'm right. I make the call, but of course he shows Jack King of hearts for the flopped flush. <laughs> so, I mean, here's the thing, guys. When I make hero calls, I'm not always right. I'm not perfect. I actually don't think this hero call was that bad, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. I switch seats again. At this point, I've lost all the profit from the 5-5, plus a little more. It's basically like I'm starting over for the day. But don't count me out yet, and I pick up queen 10 of diamonds in the big blind. The under the gun plus one opens to $45. The small blind calls, I call, and the straddle comes along as well. Four ways to a flop that comes king, deuce, nine, rainbow, and the action checks all the way around. The turn is the king of diamonds, pairing the board, and the small blind bets $75. The small blind could have a king, but I have a flush draw, gut shot, and straight flush draw. It's a cheap price, so I make the call, and the other two players fold. The river is an ace, and the small blind checks now. This is such crucial information, because the ace didn't bring in any draws, if he had a king, he would have almost certainly continued betting. So now I think he most likely has a 9 or some pocket pair. Either way, he doesn't look strong, so I bet $200, he folds, and we get our bluff through. This is why being in position is so beneficial, guys. 
Poker is a game of information, and he gave me the information I needed to make this bluff an easy play. After that, I was able to pick up a quick $100 with a 3-bet. There was a raise to $35, two callers. I made it 205 with pocket 10s and took it down easy next hand. I get ace-king off in the cutoff. I open to $35. The small blind puts in the 3-bet to 120 The straddle cold calls. This hand is getting big. The small blind should be 3-betting me wide since I opened late position. And the small blind is probably the most likely spot to 3-bet from, so I continue the pressure and put in a 4-bet to $450. The small blind says, let's gamble, and goes all in, and the straddle folds. He has me covered. I have $1,080 total. I'm never folding when I'm already this committed. I call. The small blind flips over. Jack, queen of spades. We are ahead. Just gotta dodge spades, a jack, or a queen. The run out comes clean, and we take down a huge pot. I guess this time I was the one receiving the punt. Last hand of the vlog, I pick up pocket fives in the hijack. I open to $35, the button, small blind, big blind, straddle, pretty much the whole table calls. Five ways to will a flop with pocket fives is good luck apparently, because the flop comes ace five four with two diamonds. Action checks to me, I put in a C bet to $100, and only the big blind calls. The turn is the six of diamonds completing the flush draw and the big blind checks. I think checking back is the better option here. He has about $1,500 left in his stack at this point. We're pretty deep, so if I bet and get raised, it will be pretty disastrous. If I check and he bets the river, I'll have a pretty easy call. And if the board pairs, I can raise for value, so I check and the river is a two, bringing a one-liner straight to a three. Of course, he shouldn't have any threes here, so when he checks to me, I bet $240, trying to target a hero call from any ace. He goes in the tank for a full minute, then makes the call, I show, he mucks, and a little after that, I rack up and cash out. Well guys, that was stressful. <laughs> I started off playing 5-5, five -five was running insanely hot. Uh, I was in for 500 and I made like 1100 there, I think. And then I went to the 5510. Things were going okay. And then I did some pretty big punts uh, with some missed draws. And uh, yeah, that was really rough. So I was up stuck a while, kind of floating around the even lines. And then I was in for a total of 1200 in the uh, in the 5510 and then all in all for today I cashed out 2725 for a profit of 1525 on the day about 400 in the 5510 and 1100 in the 55 so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one